Hi there and thank you for joining me. So here's the situation in this video. Maybe you're working at some mathematical problem on a calculator and the answer gives you a long string of decimals which have repeating numbers. So you might end up with 0.777 or 0.4545. So what you have here is a recurring decimal. And the fact is, it is quite often far more accurate to write it as a fraction. And this is a skill that you might be asked to prove in an exam. So let's have a look at the method. I usually like to start with definitions. So let's have a look at what a recurring decimal actually is. Any fraction can be converted into a decimal, but some convert rather more easily than others. Let's have a look at the four examples on the screen here. We've got three quarters. Now, to convert a fraction into a decimal, we take the top number and we divide it by the bottom. So in this case, it's three divided by four. Now, if you do this on a calculator, three divided by four is not 0.75. And that's fine, 0.75 is not a recurring decimal, it's known as a terminating decimal. In other words, it finishes at 5. Nice and easy to write. Again, if we divide 2 by 5 on a calculator, we get 0.4. So in these situations here where the decimals are terminating, there's not a problem. Let's take a look, however, at the next two examples. If we have 2 divided by 3, your calculator will give you the answer 0 0.6666. Now this is a decimal that continues forever. It has no end. The 6 is therefore known as the recurring number. It just keeps happening. Now if we take 5 elevenths, 5 divided by 11 is 0 0.4. Five, four, five, and here we go again. This continues forever. Now, in this case, we have two numbers that are recurring. The four and five just repeat themselves forever. Why is this a problem for us? Because in an exam, we are quite often given a recurring decimal and asked to convert it or show that it can be stated as a fraction. So we need to do it in reverse, and that's what we're going to take a look at here. I'm going to stay with these same two fractions for a moment, just to have a look as to how we actually write the decimal, because of course we cannot continue writing sixes forever. So with this example, two thirds, it's not 0.666 and onwards. So in this situation, as I just mentioned, we just have the one number that is repeating itself. So to indicate that, we would write this as 0 0.6 and then just put a little dot above the 6. That tells us the 6 is going to repeat itself. Similarly with 5 elevenths, in this case, there are actually two digits. There's the 4 and the 5 that keep repeating themselves. So similarly, we would write this as 0 0.45 and put a dot over both the four and the five to show that these two numbers are both repeating. The number of repeating digits, be it one or two, is important to us here because that decides exactly how we are going to solve this problem. So here are the questions. I know we've seen the answers in the first two pages, but we're going to work this backwards and then I'll look at some more examples. With a question like this, you may be asked to prove or to show that not 0.666 is equal to two thirds and we need to prove it mathematically. This is what we do. We take the decimal and we have a look at how many numbers there are that are recurring. And we've already said that in this example, it is just the six that is recurring. Because it is only one number, we are going to use the number 10. 
to help us out here. In the second example, because there are two recurring numbers, we are going to use 100 to help us out. If we ever come across a decimal which has got three numbers recurring, we would use 1000. The first thing we do is we actually write out the 0 0.6 and literally we add a few sixes on the end. It doesn't actually matter how many at this point. And what we do, we say, let that number there be equal to n. So we now have n equals 0 0.6666. Now I said we're going to use the number 10 here because what we're next going to do is to work out what the value of 10n is. Now to work out 10n, we have to multiply this number by 10. So 0 0.6666 multiplied by 10 is equal to 6.6666. The next thing we do is a little subtraction. We actually take the 10n and we subtract the n. In other words, we're going to find 9n. So let's do that. That is 6.66666 minus 0 0.66666. If we do that, we end up with the answer of simply 6. All the others subtract out and we end up with 6. So we now have 9n equals 6. A little bit of algebra will tell us then that n is equal to 6 divided by 9. And if we simplify 6 divided by 9, we get 2 thirds. So we have proved that 0 0.66666 recurring is equal to 2 thirds. That was a little bit confusing the first time around. Don't worry, I'm going to do two or three more examples. Let's move on, in fact, to the second one now, where we have a situation where we have two recurring decimals. So, again, let's do the same thing. We are looking to call this number n. So n equals 0 point. And again, just put a few decimal figures in there. Don't forget, this time we are proving that this is equal to 5 elevenths. Now, a slightly different situation. We said that we had two recurring decimals. Therefore, we have to use not 10, but 100. So now I need to find 100 N. So what I'm going to do is multiply this number by 100. And that ends up as 45.4545. Let's do the same again, only this time we're not subtracting 10n minus n, we are now subtracting 100n minus n. Now in doing that, we are finding 99n. So the sum is 45.4545 minus 0 0.4545 and we get the answer 45. So 99n is equal to 45. Again a little bit of algebra that means that n is equal to 45 over 99. I'm going to assume at this point that you are familiar with the process of simplifying fractions and in fact if you simplify 45 99ths you will come to 5 elevenths both top and bottom will divide by 9 so again we've now proved that this decimal here is the equivalent of 5. Let's have a look at some more examples to try to iron out any confusion. So here's a typical example we are being asked to show that 0 0.24 recurring can be written as 8 over 33. First thing, look at the decimal. How many digits do we have that are actually recurring? There are two of them. Therefore, because there are two of them, we are going to use 100. This actual number 
can be written as 0.2424 and so on. And this is what we need to do. We don't have to put too many on there, just a few digits. And what we do, like every example, we call that the number n. We then need to find 100 n. So we're going to do that by multiplying this number by 100. So the decimal point moves two places. So we end up with 24.24. And that number continues. The trick now is to find the value of 99 n. So we're going to take the 100 n and take away the n. So 99 n will be 24.2424 minus 0.2424. And if we take that away, it all cancels itself out and we end up as 99 n equals 24. Juggle that around slightly, means that n equals 24 over 99. And again, if we simplify that down, the top and the bottom both divide by 3, and we get 8 over 33. And that's what we've been asked to prove, so that's your answer. Another example simply asks us to convert 0.7 recurring to a fraction. Same method again. n is equal to 0.7777. We only have one number that is recurring, the 7, so we're just going to use 10 this time. So because we're using 10, we need to find 10n. We multiply this by 10 and we get 7.7777. So 10n minus n, 10n minus n gives us 7.7777 minus 0.7777 and of course if we subtract that we simply get the answer 7 so that is 9n 10n minus an n 9n equals 7 so n equals 7 divided by 9 that will not simplify Therefore, that is the answer. The fraction for 0.7 recurring is 7 ninths. Here's one that looks a little bit different. So let's have a go at this. We're asked to show that 0.83 recurring can be rewritten as 5 over 6. So we've got 0.83, two decimal places, but we have to stick to our rule. Only one of them is recurring because if you write this decimal out in full, you would get 0.83333. It's just the 3 that is recurring. So that is going to be our n. Now, because there's only the one recurring digit, we are going to use 10. Doesn't matter how many decimal places, there's only the one recurring. So 10n is 10 times this number, which will be 8.33333. Sticking to our method, we're going to do 10n minus n, so we're going to end up with 9n. So let's do this. We've got 8.3333 minus 0.8333. You notice I've maybe dropped a digit here and there. As long as you're putting a few repeating digits in there, this will work out. Let's subtract. We get 0, 0, 0 going to have to borrow for this one 13 minus 8 is 5 and then we have a 7 so we actually have 9n is equal to 7.5 so we've actually got a decimal in here now and in fact if we move it round a little bit of simple algebra n equals 7.5 divided by 9 now you can simplify this and juggle around with the numbers but actually before you start simplifying, just to make it easier for yourself, it is sometimes easier when we have a decimal like this to multiply the top and the bottom by 10. So you end up with 75 over 90. That way, when you start simplifying, it's easier to find a factor of both 75 and 90. 
and in fact if you divide them both by 15 you will end up with 5 over 6 which is what we were asked for in the first place now we have covered most examples here but I want to finish with a tough one just to show how you might get out of a difficult situation let's have a look at this decimal it's 0 0.0513 now you'll notice there's a dot above the 5 and also above the 3 what that is actually telling you is that this group of numbers here the 513 are the numbers that are recurring so in fact if you were to write this decimal out longer it would be 513 513 etc so although there are only two dots it is encompassing the whole group of three decimals now this is a situation where we have three decimals therefore we are dealing with a thousand not ten or a hundred so let's follow the rules and take this a step at a time we know therefore that n equals 0 0.0513513 and I'll stop there for the moment I'm then going to look for 1000 n so I need to multiply this number by a thousand decimal point moves three places and I end up with the number 51.3513 five one three and so on so we're going to follow exactly the same rule we are going to do 1000 n minus n so this time we are finishing with 999 n you can see the numbers are getting slightly more complex let's do this then we have 51.3513 five one and I'll leave it there and we take away 0 0.051351 and so on if we do the sum again we're now finding it's all cancelling itself out which is what we're looking to do and we end up with 315 so 999n is equal to 51.3 which all looks quite horrible and even when we've done the juggling around with the algebra we end up that n is equal to 51.3 over 999 in a situation like this we do exactly what I did in the last example let's get rid of the decimals multiply the top by 10 to give us 513 and multiply the bottom by 10 to give us 9,990 now we need to simplify I'm going to leave that to you simplifying fractions I've got covered in a different video but if you divide these by 9 then maybe divide them by 3 it does simplify down to 19 over 370 a difficult one even the answer is a little ugly but that is the correct answer it won't simplify any further and that's recurring decimals i hope those few examples have helped you a little bit there are plenty of worksheets available online for practice if you'd like to see some of my other videos my subscription button is right below me now and i do hope you can find something else that might be of use to you good luck in your studies thank you